guys. Do you know, we've got another hiccup. <laughs> I'm sorry about this, but uh, although we've managed to master the technology at last, we haven't got any guest tonight. The thing is that I had a lovely phone conversation with Blay Whitby about his appearance here. Uh, I spoke to him for some length a week or so ago, and I can't uh, raise him now. So I don't know what's going on. Um, the, one of the problems is that he, he has a Sussex University email address and they appear to have recently upgraded their security. So it, unless you're on the, their contact list, you get blocked. But I overcame that. And as I said, I had a long and enjoyable telephone conversation with him. And we agreed everything. And we did a, a, a StreamYard test. Uh, but unfortunately, I can't raise him now. So that's a bit of a mystery. I sent him emails. And of course, they get blocked on the way. Although I've tried his other email address. I've rung his phone number, nothing happened there. So we have a choice. We can either call the whole thing off, or maybe I could play you a debate that I had before lockdown against a Muslim in Manchester University. Can you give me some indication of whether you'd like that? I've got the comment bank open, so I'm looking to see for your responses. I can see we've got 13 viewers. Woohoo! That's nice. <laughs> and honestly, I'm really enjoying these series of, of chats and, you know, little guests that I have. And it, it's a terrific opportunity to speak to experts in their various fields and so many different fields. But, um, Tonight, we have a hiccup. So, I'm offering you, call the whole thing off, or I'll play a debate I had with a Muslim in Manchester University for their Islamic society uh, before lockdown, way back in February, if you can remember that far back. We've got one. Yes, thank you. <laughs> uh, okay. Yes, you're right, Tom. It is. I agree. Tom says, it's annoying the guest hasn't showed. That's true. Yeah. I'm sorry, Tom. I've done my best. It's the first time. You know, we've had 12 moderately successful shows. And... Uh, you want to see the debate? Great, okay. They're coming in now. Okay. These are nice. Thanks, guys. Right, I'll get it on screen and share with you. Hey, you're here. Hello. Hello. <laughs> I think you might be muted. Ah, good. You're, you're not muted. Let me just take down. I've been covering for you. Um, I don't know what oh. happened. Obviously, there was a mix-up yes. in our arrangements, but um, but uh, we've decided, the audience and I, have decided to reschedule you because we've actually spent uh, the allotted time on uh, a, a debate, which I used to fill up the space instead of you and I doing our show. It was quite a frightening debate. Oh, you've gone muted. Uh, yes. <laughs> you watched some of it, did you? Yes. I did, yes. Yes, it was. Uh, I was invited by... Yeah, I was invited by um, the Islamic Society of Manchester University to debate one of their uh, top dogs on the subject of Is Life Observed Without God? And uh, I enjoyed it. It was uh, quite a fun debate. 
It was quite fearsome. Never mind. Um, I, d I didn't see the audience when you asked yes, um, well. how, m how many of them were believers, but I, uh, I assumed you were <laughs> in a distinct minority. It was, it was the lion's den. Yes, yes. that's right. <laughs> anyway, we've, um, we've used up the time that we allocate to I'd, I'd all sorts this of show. show. The, um, yeah, I would have gone in a different way, I think, I think, but anyway, that, that's just me. <laughs> yeah, well, we all have our own way. Yes. <laughs> Maybe we can talk about that when you do come on the show. <laughs> oh, that one, no, no, I don't want to get drawn onto religion. I'd be much safer staying with the ethics, but it, uh, but I mean, both of you mentioned morality and ethics. And I don't think I really agreed with what either of yes. you said, but <laughs> uh, no, no, it's very much it, at the cutting edge, isn't it? But it, it, oh, no, it's a cheap shot to say that atheists don't have any ethics. Um, it really is. Yes, uh, it's yeah. Because I, I guess it's when I do it, really. When I do, I think, well, anyway, it's all off topic. What do you, what do you want from me? <laughs> well, what I, what I want now, because we've overrun our time, what I want really with you is to reschedule you in, into July. Can you do some Wednesday in July? I guess. Uh, if I put it in my diary, then this chance I'll know. Yes. Um, how did you... How did we contact you in the end? Was it through Rosanna? Uh, yes. I, 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 the, the, problem, the problem was, I was, I, I was in a Zoom meeting, of course. This is my, my quiet life. Um, oh, yes. Yes. When, you, when you phoned, I was actually in another meeting. Ah. Um, mm. uh, but I'm afraid that's how it is. Yes. Uh, virtual Westminster which yeah. I'm here to tell you is a great deal more pleasant than real life Westminster. <laughs> I think so, yes. I don't think anything is going to get me back into the crowds and the security and the police in flat jackets with machine guns. No, it's yeah. much more fun at home. <laughs> yes, yes, I like being locked down too, especially with a connection like this. Yeah. So why don't we, I'm not sure how, we best communicate whether it's by email or twitter message or messenger or whatever I, well i'm surprised that how few people do old-fashioned email i'm perfectly yeah. capable of that i like i like this but you have a green screen don't you I, and I, and I I, do. yes. this is my first time using Streamyard, so i haven't set up yeah. the virtual pub and all that but i do have oh. a virtual pub in zoom yeah. Look, I can take you to our wine cellar if you like. <laughs> or you can be in the gallery. Do you like the gallery? It's fun, isn't it? I think I preferred the library, but... <laughs> yes, okay. Well, <laughs> I've done enough fiddling with it now, I think. So, email me then, and uh, tell me which Wednesday evening in July is suitable for you. Okay. And we'll set you up again. Okay. Um, as I remember the format, you were going to interview me and record it. But That's right. Yes. Well, this is, although this is live now, it becomes a podcast after it's ended. It's immediately available as a podcast forever. Okay. Um, well, you'll know what your members want to hear. Um, I mean, you could pump me on the politicians versus the the uh, the large U.S. corporates because I I don't know if I mentioned it to you, but people assume that everyone's in bed with Mark Zuckerberg, and I'm here to tell you that this side of the Atlantic m politicians are um, pretty hostile. 
more hostile than me, I would say. Mm. And, yeah. and I'm not I'm not going to defend Zuckerberg for a minute. I think when it comes to ethics, he's a good example of how a lot of modern commerce tro tro trolls along the bottom and if there's a bit of revolt from users they move up a notch and then head down again um so, wait so we could talk about that if you like social media has had an enormous impact on ethics hasn't it and not all to the good i'm afraid um oh. uh, in in fact i i guess i've changed my views i, I actually blame the internet per se I, I think to to sloganize it if you were a weird person with weird beliefs before the internet then you were the only nutter in the village but the magic of the internet is it puts you in touch with yeah. the other seven people on the planet yes who, who share your crazy views and then yeah. you're no longer a nutter you're yeah. an oppressed minority yeah and this is why flat earth you know the flat earth society is stronger than ever and, and to yeah. believe in a flat earth now, you need all sorts of supporting weird beliefs, um, including the uh, uh, airliner windows distort the horizon. Yeah. NASA and EASA and the Soviets are in some wicked conspiracy to show us these fake photographs of space. It, and when people sail around the world in their yachts, they, they don't really go around the world. You need a whole load of, of, of supporting yeah. beliefs that you wouldn't if you just lived in a quiet village in the middle of, of England and never went out of it. Um, yeah. But but nonetheless, people are putting this stuff around. In fact, you could pump me on it if you like, because I happen to know from my interest in aviation that KLM suspended a senior captain because she posted on an internet forum that she believed in a flat earth. And that... that um, prompted a very interesting debate among the professional pilots, half of whom was saying, half of whom was saying, they were saying, I don't want to lose my career because one night I say something silly on the web. And the other half was saying, oh, come on, wait a minute. You know, this you really shouldn't be in charge of an aircraft going across an ocean if you think the earth is flat. You, there's going to be some serious debate about when the fuel runs out and so on. Um, so yes it was really quite polarized but well just in case you think that belief in a flat earth is something we're all just going to joke about yeah you know, just think about it in an airline captain and you'll realize that maybe it's not such a joke it's serious yes i don't know how they cope with time zones when they land and it's the time is not the same as it was when they took off but anyway we'll talk about that another day i thoroughly agree with you though as a, as an ex science teacher there was often some naughty person in the back of the class whose object was just to alienate the teacher was was just to use the yeah. teacher as an aunt sally to be hostile towards education and now those people those 13 year olds have grown up they've got a laptop and a connection and they're online as podcasters with a big audience and they are what do they call it um there's a word yes there uh, is i'm trying to think it, it's like opinion formers but it's not uh, influencers influencers yes that's right and and what they like to do is trigger that's the word i was trying to think of trigger somebody who they might see as a figure of authority or or celebrity or power or something so they've suddenly got broadcasting capability anyway you've read anyway, this I, I assume uh yes i think i've seen that yes <laughs> it's it's really quite good um yeah. well you see the books i have lying around <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm, um, I'm, I've also got um, Believing in Bullshit by Stephen Law. Do you know that one? No. But uh, I like, it, it, there is an, some sort of emotional appeal of conspiracy theories. Yeah, yeah. And anyway, it's <laughs> past my bedtime. Yeah. <laughs> Good night. <laughs> <laughs> so email me with a date. Um, I, July is available at the moment. 
I've got, uh, I was going to tell the, the viewers that we've got lined up next week, we've got Dr. Ed Morrison from Portsmouth University on evolutionary psychology. Uh, the, the following week, the end of June, we have Dr. Mark Darcy, who is an expert on aging. He's going to give us a, a explanation of why we age and maybe a bit about what happens after we die, the afterlife. So <laughs> <laughs> that should be great fun. And then uh, following that, but the date hasn't been confirmed yet, sometime in July, we have Dr. Sam Gregson from CERN, who is going to tell us how they hunted for the Higgs boson. Ah, oh, yes. You, you believe, you see from the suit that I really have been to yes. Westminster I can virtually. See. Yes. Well, we don't have to do that. You won't see me in a tie. <laughs> Thanks. Well, I'm applying the same dress codes that were applied to me when I was physically there. I notice not everybody does. Yeah. Um, but it kind of feels, well, it feels appropriate to. Yeah. Dress codes are something else, aren't they? <laughs> anyway, I'm yeah. going to play... I'm going to play our final music now, our outro, and we're going to schedule you for a, a lovely event in the future. Okay, thanks. Thanks, thanks for coming, Bye. anyway. Bye-bye. Yeah. Bye. -bye. Bye.